to start this final demo, I've already imported the last shape I created in part 2 of this 3 part series. So to start the first thing I'm going to do is lock my sketch layer and hide the shape I've already created so I can use it later. I'll create a new layer and now I'll zoom in and use the ellipse tool and hold down shift to create a perfect circle roughly the size of the outside circle here. Then I'll select it, copy, and paste in place. I'll select it again and hold down shift and option to scale proportionally from the center while I drag to create the inner circle. I'll select the outer circle and hide that layer so I don't get confused while I work on this next part. I'll select the pen tool and draw this curve, copy, paste in place, reflect, and line it up on the opposite side. I'll start by joining these overlapping anchor points. Now I'll add anchor points where my two paths overlap and delete these outer anchor points that I don't need anymore. Now I'll zoom in really close to one of these anchor points and select the circle path and add an anchor point that intersects the one I just created. I'll do the same thing on the other side and use the direct selection tool to select and delete this unnecessary anchor point. And now I just need to select the overlapping anchor points on either side and join them to create a closed path and that is how I would create the shape. I'll use the ellipse tool to create the eye shape and tilt it to match my sketch. I've made the stroke a little smaller so I can see better and now I'll copy, paste in place, reflect and place the second eye on the opposite side. To create this heart shape for the lips, I'll use the pen tool to draw the right side, then copy, paste in place, reflect and line them up so that the end anchor points are overlapping. Now I'll join the overlapping anchor points and I thought I selected a rounded joint but I guess not so I'll just fix that really quick by selecting the rounded joint instead of the pointed one under stroke. I'll free transform the shape a tiny bit and move it over so it's centered between the eyes. To create the cheeks, I'll need that copy of my inner circle that I hid earlier and I'll use the ellipse tool to create the cheeks. I'm going to give them a black fill now so I can use the pathfinder tools and select all three and then hit the divide pathfinder. This divides all the shapes where paths intersect. Then I can select the parts that I don't need, which are the circle and the lower half of the cheeks, and delete them. And now I have this really neat effect of the blushing cheeks following the curve of the inner circle. For my final design, I need these shapes to have a fill, so I'll just select them and give them all a black fill. Now I can unhide the outer circle and the shape I created in the last video and place it where it belongs and let me hide my sketch here so I can check on my progress. And that looks good, so now I'll give the outer circle a white fill and our original scarf shape needs a black fill. As you can see, I have three of these nesting dolls in my sketch, so I'll just select the one I created and copy and paste it twice to get my three nesting dolls. To keep things neat in my layers panel, I'm going to select each nesting doll and group each one by pressing the letter G. These flowers are very simple to make. I'll just use the ellipse tool and hold down shift to create one perfect circle about the size of one petal then copy and paste it and arrange them around in a circle. I'll create another smaller circle in the center and hide that layer for now. Now I'll select all of these and use the unite shape to make them into a compound path. To release the compound path again, I'll just right click and select release compound path. Now I'll just select this inner path and delete it since I don't actually need it. I will give this flower a black fill and now I can hide the smaller inner circle I made earlier and give it a white fill with no stroke. Since I need a couple more of these flowers, I will select the flower, copy and paste it a few more times and use the align tool to make sure they're all lined up nicely. 
before I move on to the border for this design, I'll create a new layer to keep things organized. The first thing I'm going to do is select the rectangle tool and click anywhere on the artboard to open this window that allows me to choose the width and height of my rectangle. This actually came out a little small compared to my sketch, so I'm just using the selection tools to stretch my rectangle to the correct width. Now all of these inner rectangles can easily be created using my first rectangle as a template. First, as usual, I'll copy and paste in place, then hold down Shift and Option to scale proportionally from the center until I get the right width. To adjust the height, I'll hold Option and drag up or down to stretch the rectangle equally on both ends until I reach the correct height. Then copy and paste in place and stretch this new rectangle to the correct height. And hold Option again to adjust the width. With the rectangle selected, I'll hover over one of the corners until I see this little circle show up. I'll click and drag it to round out the corners of the rectangle. Then go back to the inner rectangle, copy and paste in place, and use the same method to round out those corners. I'll hide my sketch layer to check on my progress and it's looking pretty good so far. To finish off, I'll zoom in and select the ellipse tool, hold down shift and create a perfect circle that just intersects with the paths above and below it. Now I'll copy, paste in place, and line up the two circles and delete this unwanted anchor point. Then copy, paste, and reflect to create the second open curve. Now I can use this as my template for the rest of the curves in my design. I'll just copy, paste, and rotate for the sides, and copy and paste for the bottom. Finally, I just need to copy and paste my open curves and have them intersect. I will group them, then copy and paste a few more times to finish off this design. And that is it. You can see the difference between how clean and precise the finished product looks next to my original sketch. Hi! I wanted to let you guys know about this new playlist that I put together. You can find it on the Simple Art Tips channel if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, you'll see a playlist called Amazing Art Resources by Other YouTubers. In that playlist, you will find painting tutorials, uh, color theory and color mixing, information on painting materials, graphic design, and Adobe Illustrator tutorials that I've found very useful in the past and I will continue adding new things to it, new subjects, and if you have suggestions for that, please let me know. Hopefully you will take a look at it and find something helpful in there. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter. I can answer your questions a lot faster on there just because I get more notifications from Twitter than I do from YouTube. Or if you just wanna to talk to me, ask me some questions about myself, you know, I would love to hear from you guys. Anyway, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this long ass tutorial <laughs> and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.